the Hank Cisco Show, ladies and gentlemen. Don't touch that remote. Today's show is going to be all about the heart. You know, Tony Bennett sings, I left my heart in San Francisco. Well, we're going to talk about the heart. Okay, so I have two top doctors from Einstein Montgomery. And, uh, you know, you, when you go to a, this, a team of heart doctors, when you go there, the one analyzes, I guess it's the word you use, you check it out, see what, blah, 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 and then he bobs and weaves and sees where the problems are, and then he says, if you need an operation, boom, then they turn it over to the surgeon. Now, that's, right. that's what we have. Now, tell them your name and your, and your position, what you do, okay? My name's Scott Fred. I'm a cardiologist, so I'm a heart doctor. Um, and my job is to diagnose heart problems. Did I use the right words? You did, you did. Okay, okay. <laughs> Routine question. I'm an ex-cop, you know, so I'm going to ask questions. Go ahead. Uh, my job is to see patients who have heart problems or who have symptoms concerning for heart problems and to try to diagnose what's going on and treat them with medications, some procedures. And if they do need surgery, I refer them over to my colleagues who are the surgeons. Tell them who you are. Thanks for having us back. My name is Alexandra Tuluka, and I'm a heart. Sound like a paisan? No. <laughs> no, not a paisan. No, 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 no. <laughs> not a paisan. Romanian. Go ahead. Um, so, what was I saying? Yeah, you, so you're the heart surgeon. I'm he the heart surgeon. He says this guy has he a problem. He diagnoses. I treat it, right? right. So um, we we look at the patients, see what they have, and figure out the best way to treat them. Which kind of surgery, what kind of procedure, whether they even need anything, that kind of stuff. Okay. Heart valve problems. What's the scoop on that now? So heart valve problems are common. There's a lot of patients with heart valve problems. The most common heart valve problems are patients who are over the age of 70, and it's called aortic stenosis. That's me. I'm 91. Definitely on to victory. On. Go ahead. So aortic stenosis is kind of like sticking your thumb over a water hose. So usually the water flows out nice and easy. You stick your thumb over that water hose. Go ahead. And all of a sudden the water's trying to force its way out. Same thing happens with the aortic valve. Hold it up so the camera can see it. The aortic valve is supposed to open nice and easy. If it gets filled with chunks of calcium, Oh, that's that like valve. calcium in there now. Yep, stops that's the opening. valve. That's, that's the valve. valve. Yeah, the valve sits, see this red thing here? This is called the aorta. And it's the big vessel that leaves your heart. And this valve, this aortic valve, sits sort of right here at the root. It's the gatekeeper to the body, right? So your heart pumps, the blood goes out through this valve. And in the past, the most common cause of aortic stenosis used to be it's, rheumatic it's, it's, it's disease. This, the clogging up here. The clogging up, the calcium, yeah. In the past, young people got it because they had rheumatic fever and then they got rheumatic disease, but now it's most common in older people. But uh, I think this, uh, uh, the newest, the latest thing out now, it's going into somebody's body. You know, before they cut up here and they call the zipper club, you know, and so now you don't have to. Like when they operated on me for my, I had 95%. I only have a little cut over here. Yeah. Dr. Anderson worked on it. You're jumping ahead, now. Hank. Huh? So <laughs> You're tell jumping me, ahead. Tell me, well, tell me, you, you analyze what's the, what's the easiest way to get into the heart. Let's let let Scott tell you a little bit more about you Go know ahead. sort of what the disease actually is and how we find it, and then we can talk about yeah. the different options. <laughs> well, how do you know you're going to have a heart problem? So usually shortness of breath. Okay, that's, that's the most what I common had. Go ahead. So what else? patients slowly realize that they just can't do the types of exercise or activity they used to be able to do. Right. And then they realize something's wrong. They end up in my office. We do an ultrasound of the heart, which is called an echocardiogram. And on that echo, ultra yeah. echo, I got that. echo, baby ultrasound. <laughs> <laughs> on that echo, you can actually see the valves opening and closing. And if there's a problem and they're fixed or rigid and they're not opening the way they should, we can make the diagnosis and figure out if we need to fix them. And then, like you were alluding to, there's newer ways to fix them nowadays. Sometimes patients need the zipper club type of surgery. Yeah. Sometimes they need minimally invasive types of yeah. approaches. But there's other ways of, for you right. entering the body yeah. on yeah. an operation. So you're right. I think that the majority of the valves that we do, especially this aortic valve, 
Um, it's very rare that we go through the zipper club anymore, unless the patient needs a really? bypass or another valve or something problems. else. Right. So if it's just the valve, we can make a small incision right here. It's literally right here on the front of your chest and another small incision in the groin. And it's the same operation. We still put you on the heart-lung machine. You still cut out the valve and put a new valve in like this. It's a tissue valve. See, hold that up. So, so you want to see it? Get it. Now, now, it's made out of cow tissue. This is, you put that new valve in. Yeah, you put that new valve in. You sew it with your own hand. But it's a well, better they, yeah, way but of... You use a machine, a remote, what do I call that? Uh, no, we, we don't use a robot yet for that. No? You're talking about a robot, I think? Well, I think they do that to stitch. I thought I saw it on my, on my operation. For, well, for you, it was maybe different. With, it's different instruments. You know, they're longer. They look a little bit different because oh, okay. it's um, the smaller incision, but it's essentially the, a similar procedure as before. We've just gotten a lot better at smaller cut, better recovery time, less traumatic to the body, you know yeah. what I mean? Because surgery, is, it's a big yeah. deal, right? And the convalescing is so important too. What's right. the scoop on that now? So usually patients will spend about five days in the hospital. They'll have the operation. First couple of days they have to recover, get back onto the floor, get up and walk around. And then in about five days, usually they can leave the hospital. Sometimes they'll yeah, go that home. that with me. Yeah. Then so, a rehab, yeah. Yeah, sometimes yeah. they will go to rehab, get some physical therapy. Sometimes if they're doing great, they'll yeah. just go home. Yeah, well, that's, that. Dr. Yeah. Anderson said that I come out of it like a 45, 45, <laughs> 50 year old uh, man because I, and I'm 91. Yeah. But you know what was scary afterwards when he told me, he says, you know, he says 20 years ago, he says, we wouldn't have operated on you because you were too old. That's true. You know, that's scary. So I'm so happy that we, ladies and gentlemen, you know, when in doubt, check it out. If you've got a problem, right. you start, you can't breathe too good or you go up the top of the steps and, and you're tired, you know, that, then you better check it out. Right. Okay? Yeah. That's right. You're right. But, but like I say, if you're doing exercise and you're tired, that's a different story. But if you're just normal, you know, no good. So yeah. go ahead. Well, to sort of add with that recovery, you know, and to follow that statement that if you're too old, we wouldn't do surgery on you, it depends how old and how good you are. In I mean, shape, if, yeah. you're in, if you're in shape and you just yeah. started feeling bad, we're tired, yeah. and we can get you back yeah, to well, how you were before. I was in pretty good shape. I Absolutely. took a picture of me uh, when I was boxing <laughs> <Yeah>. here. <laughs> we're so, not talking about those days. We're talking about like a, a couple old days, years you know. ago. <laughs> and I was over here, I was drinking and driving over there. I was with yeah. on, a, on, a, on a bicycle over there. But, uh, <laughs> you, you know, know where is it? Think of the boxer over here, you know. If but I, I kept that. So we're telling people yeah. now to be active a little bit, Absolutely. you know. It's an active recovery, definitely, right. active and, recovery. And, Use the stairs up and down. I Use know when I was stairs. in rehab, they made me go up the steps. That was a big deal to go five steps. Oh my God, I, I'm doing good. I can go up the top of the steps. Well, why can't I do that when I'm feeling good? So I stay good. That's right, that's right. Part of recovery now from heart procedures is to be active. It used to be like when Lyndon Johnson had his heart problems, yeah. the cardiologist who took care of him told him to stay in bed for a couple months. We don't do that anymore. Nowadays, we no. get patients yeah. up, we move them around. That's part of the recovery. It's better for the heart as it's recovering yeah. from an operation or for procedure to be active. The more sedentary you are, the weaker you tend to get. As a surgeon, everybody thinks that all you got to do is uh, put the, they're going to cut everybody. You know, mm -hmm. what's the latest thing now? What what what's uh, the, you know? So we look at on. we look at every patient individually because everyone's a little bit different age right. is just a number and we lay out all the options so the main options are so the traditional zipper club which like i said yeah. we don't really do that much anymore no, no. the smaller incisions and then if you're you know really a lot older or really you're sicker and we feel like you cannot have still it's called open heart surgery there's an alternative which um there's a valve that we can put, it's like a stent, and I'm sorry that I don't have a picture of it, but it's essentially one of these valves like this uh -huh. inside of a small metal cage, okay. and we can bring it from the groin, and we do it together with you our car. How do you yeah. get up there? We, 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 we put it in your artery down here in the, in the groin. Horn? Yeah, in the- And how do you right. get it up there to the top to the heart? It's, 
you know, it's magic. <laughs> Push it up. It's over a wire. Right on. <laughs> it, it, you don't need to know all those details. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> Essentially, everything happens over a wire. We can yeah. pretty much get into your body, into any artery in your body with wires nowadays. Oh. And over the wires, we put catheters, we can put stents, we can put the valve, yeah. all sorts of things. It's like wow. building a ship in a bottle. Yeah. Yeah. And we Pretty usually, cool. you know. But, you know, you're both young, good looking people, you know. And then. <laughs> Why and do we do this? Involved <laughs> and going around uh, operating like that. I mean, this is great, you know. <laughs> what did I say? Get yourself a young doctor and an old lawyer. You can't go wrong. <laughs> what did I say, right? Okay, now, who gets problems with the heart valve? Who, who what causes them? Or, I mean, I, what cause? We, uh, what type of person is subject to getting this? Heart problem. So the biggest, the, the biggest risk factor is age, and mm -hmm. that you can't do anything about. No. The older you are, just like a car, things tend to break down, and it's Every the day. same thing yeah. with heart valves. As you get older, you're more likely to develop problems involving your heart valves. There are some patients who are born with genetic problems with their heart valves, and they can get into trouble when they're young. And then there's a problem called rheumatic heart disease that used to be a big problem with heart valves. And we've pretty much taken care of that in this country, though we still see some problems with rheumatic heart disease in this yeah. country from time to time. Well, now, you mentioned uh, uh, one time, oh no, they heard of, of a pig valve. What's the story on that? Well, a pig valve is, um, this is a cow valve. It's not a an cow. actual, it's not an actual valve from an, a cow. It's just tissue from a cow that goes through a processing and oh. it, it gets treated so it doesn't get calcium on it, so it lasts longer. Uh, pig valves- The calcium builds on it? And yeah, calcium can build on the, the new valves also. Yeah. Well, it's just know, slower. When I was boxing, uh, I was hit this, and I hit this guy on top of the head, I had boxing gloves and it, the joint went out. Now I have a bump, bump there, but that's mm -hmm. the calcium grew around there because mm -hmm. when it jumped out, I guess it rubbed up against the bone, and now I have a over here, a little bone over here, over here. That calcium builds there, right? That's right. I'm glad it stopped building. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah. go ahead. I mean, we don't really use the pig valves as much anymore. It's just a different kind of what we call tissue valve. Um, so, you see this valve, In the other words, valve, that helps the, the, the surroundings, whatever? It's an alternative because we can't cut, we can't really cut a valve from another human being or we can't, like, we have to have an alternative that mimics your normal valve. So, they've created these tissue valves. Good. That we put in. And they can be pig or cow. Those are the most common animals. Yep. And the other option is a mechanical valve. Yeah, well, we, we don't <laughs> no. talk about that anymore because we no, don't even uh, do that anymore. Uh, when I had my first hip rate placement uh, Montgomery Hospital, Narstown, uh, they, I was in the hospital for over, over a week. I had a lot of pain. So I'm talking about the first time. I remember 12, 13 years ago, maybe 14. And uh, I had a lot of pain. Uh, my recovery was slow. And then eight years later, I had the other hip, and there was different. I was only in the hospital for uh, four or five days. My recovery was fast, and I didn't have any pain. So I asked Dr. Paleo, the operator, well, how come I didn't get no pain? He says, well, this time they put some solution in the uh, intravenous mm. that slows down the pain or so. So, you know, so look at the advancements. And when I was doing the rehab in the, in the, in the hospital, I was all by myself. The second time, I was with a group of people, and it was sort of, you know, helping me psychologically and everything, you know. So, well, I think it's the same we, thing yeah, the absolutely. I think we recognize that it's not just, you know, manually fixing the problem. It's about the whole patient, right? I right. mean, we do the surgery, and then how well you do, a lot of times also uh, depends on the team that takes care of you. And, and it's all of that, physical therapy, the nurses, the environment you're and in. And the prayers. And the prayers. <laughs> Hail Mary, <laughs> And your grace. family. <laughs> that all helps out. Um, well, but yeah, it's, it's well. a big team effort, and, and I think we have a very good heart team yeah. um, where we work. And uh, so Dr. Belasco is the one that uh, detected the problem with me. And then it shifted over to, to uh, 
Dr. Anderson, and uh, and now you come on the scene, uh -huh. right? Yep. So how long you been uh, doing this? So three years. I'm a local boy. I'm from Ambler originally. Ambler, Pennsylvania. Ambler, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Wow. So I grew up in Ambler, and then I, I did my training at the University of Maryland. So I was Maryland. down in Baltimore. Yeah. And then I wanted to come home. My wife made me come home. Her family's from this area. Too. <laughs> All right. Tell me something right. about your background. So I'm from Romania. I was born Romania. there. Romania. Raised there. And you don't do no actor back, really? What's no, that girl no from Romania who uh, won the Olympics? <laughs> Nadia <laughs> Comaneci. You don't do that, do you? What's no. her name? Nadia Comaneci. Yeah. That was like... Whatever. Yeah, uh-huh, whatever. <laughs> She's still around, I guess. <laughs> she is, but not. she doesn't do gymnastics anymore. Um, no, I don't do gymnastics. So I wasn't flexible. Then, <laughs> where, did you, where did you study? I studied, um, so I moved to this country with my family in New Jersey. I'm from New Jersey now. And I went to uh, medical school at Robert Wood Johnson, the old Rutgers Medical School, and did uh, training at Temple and down in Texas. But really, I consider Philadelphia and New yeah, Jersey my, here. you know, my well, area. Well, I think the Philadelphia area had some of the best Absolutely. hospitals around, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. some of the oldest anyhow, you know, yeah. uh, for that. It's know. great. It keeps things competitive right. and it keeps us all fresh. Well, <laughs> let's talk about prevention now. Mm -hmm. Let's let's talk about how we can help ourselves. You know, like, uh, what they say: uh, an informed nation is a, is a healthy nation. So, being informed. So, don't smoke, right? So, still the mantra is everything in moderation. In moderation. So we used to say absolutely no desserts. Absolutely. Well, let's go like uh, Clinton. Don't yeah. don't inhale. <laughs> Definitely no smoking. Though. That's not in moderation. That's not moderation. <laughs> that is, no. no smoking. <laughs> Well, go so ahead. diet and exercise very important. Diet wise, how much exercise? Now you know I see these guys doing running. They go, <laughs> they look like they're half dead. You know, why? Why you knock yourself out? When I trained in New York, <laughs> I trained with the have, uh, uh, champions of the world, and they had a sign up there: "You are here to train, not strain." So you don't overdo it. No. So if you want to work your heart out, you got to get your heart rate up. So any type of exercise where you're getting your heart rate up and you're getting tired and sweaty is cardiovascular exercise. So you can be power walking, you can be running, you can be biking, you can be swimming. Anything where that heart rate is going up, you're getting some cardiovascular benefit. That helps, that helps it. That helps to get your heart in shape. Well now, sometimes you don't feel like walking or anything, like sitting on a chair with your legs like this and good. Back so, and forth, anything, that's... That's fine, as long as it's not pure strength training. So if all you're doing is doing dumbbell curls and your biceps are getting really big, that's good, but you're not working your heart out. Your heart is only getting worked out if you're getting tired and sweaty and getting that heart rate up for a sustained oh, wait, period well, of time. Well, run that, that run right by me again now. No. Tired and sweaty. So tired and sweaty. Run that by me again now. You mean I have to knock myself out and get that heart You've got to be moving? tired. you got to be tired. You're not getting the you workout. You shouldn't heart be able to talk. Heart of my heart. <laughs> la, 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 la. Go ahead. You shouldn't be able uh, to have a conversation while you're doing your exercise. You should be huffing and puffing a little bit. Oh, oh I see what you mean. 30 oh, yeah. minutes you a day. You have me knocked out there, Rock. I mean, you know. <laughs> you know, I have a... For my next guest is going to be uh, Bobby Wine, who used to play for the Phillies, you know, and uh, he's still in good shape, you know. So he's going to be my next guest coming over. And so right. he keeps himself in shape, too. He has uh, uh, with uh, kids, little uh, junior ba football, I mean, baseball players, you know. He mm -hmm. keeps active uh, doing yeah. things, you know. So yeah. that's that's good. I, I'm, I'm active with this show here. I get a lot of exercise in here, sitting here going up and down, you know, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't have to be formal exercise at a gym like LA Fitness. If you're leading an active lifestyle and you're walking around, going to shopping malls, right. that's cardiovascular exercise as well. Well, you know, my mother we had four boys, four girls. Wow. Okay? That's cardiovascular And exercise. she yeah. would scrub the floor. She would be chopping wood. She would put, put the foot... Uh, coal in the stove. She was moving, so she, she was always Hard in shape. Mm -hmm. That's true. Now, now they push a button over the hair. Cause there, yeah, and you're not getting no exercise. <laughs> That's they true. They don't even dance out there. Now they go to hoo hoo. They don't even dance. Get some <laughs> exercise too. You know, like the rumba. Some swing dancing. Yeah, a rumba or the tango or something. You know, do a little moving. I, God, agree. I go. I go over there. They hold on to each other. What is this? And their hearts going to go. Now you come up with something. When I when I was uh, rehabbing in, in the hospital, 
I was sitting on the side of the bed, and I had my legs crossed. All right? And the doctor or whatever it was today, she came, don't fold your legs over like that. I said, why? You know, I'm always doing it, you know. And she says, because it stops circulation, you get the vi very close, what do they call them, very close mm -hmm. veins? Very I close. I call them very close yeah. veins. Very <laughs> close. <laughs> but whatever. But, you know, I, you mentioned that I see that in the, in the, on TV, you see some of these girls, the nice looking girls, they got nice legs, and they got the leg over here, they got the dress hip, you know, it's not, but for almost an hour, their legs are crossed like this, and it's causing them a problem that somebody, somebody will talk to them. Someone should tell them. I mean, <laughs> I and you said a girl should cross her legs at the ankles. That's right. <laughs> now do that from now on, cross your, I don't want to see the, 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 the go, go, go ahead, all right. <laughs> Now tell me what you what what do you got up front uh, as far as uh, were you and uh, you, how many people in your in your team? So this Dr. Blasco. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of us. There's about 15 of us because we cover the entire Montgomery Montgomery County region. Right. So um, there's about 15 cardiologists um, throughout Montgomery County. Um, and what's nice is that we don't have to send patients downtown anymore. We can do everything locally that needs to be done, huh. um, short of transplant. If you need a heart transplant, that you need to go downtown for. Everything else we can do locally, Fine. which is exciting. Well, so when you, why did you be, pick to be a, a surgeon rather than just a, a doctor that gives pills? Well, mm, was it a challenge? Was it uh, your mother or your father? Or my your grandfather. Aunt, my grandfather was a surgeon, so that's oh, how I got introduced in, in to it in Romania. He was a general surgeon, so you know he did everything at that time. And ever since I was four, I knew I was going to be a surgeon. There was no question in my so mind. So what did you do? We were playing with the kids. We cut cut things up. <laughs> No, I, I wasn't. Cut paper <laughs> was dolls? <laughs> <laughs> no, it just, I like the aspect of being able to take care of patients and Good. see them get better and, you know, really make an impact because I'll, I'll be honest, it's a pretty immediate result. Right. And I really liked that. Right. Well, how about your mother still alive, your mother? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she lives where? In Romania. Where? In Romania. Mm -hmm. Oh, she going yeah. to come over to see you sometime? Yeah, she'll come probably over in the fall. She comes, yeah. you know, once every couple of years. Yeah, she likes it over there. Yeah, she does. She's, you know, she's got her own life. It's, well, you know, it's like my, my parents come from Italy, you know, and right. so they go back. I got some friends that they go, they got their relations over there. So, you know, your heart. And I have uh, women that come and help uh, my wife who has Alzheimer's, and they're from uh, Libya, Af uh, L L Libya, Africa, someplace, you know. Mm -hmm. And they're all, their parents are over there and they're over here, you know. It's, but it, it's, it's yeah. something when you have your family like that, you know. Yeah, but it's on your mind. I've right? got, you know, my dad is here, all the relatives. It's we're we're good. We're we're not a very big family, but we we're together. Are the only I know brothers and sisters? I have a brother. I have a younger brother. He's what's in he college. Do? He's in college. He's a freshman in college. Oh, yeah? What's he what's he gonna do? He wants to be a doctor too. What he kind? told me one day that he can't decide if he wants to be a heart surgeon or a brain surgeon. I was wow. like, why don't you get to college first? <laughs> well I'll tell you, you know, a brain surgeon <laughs> Brain surgeon, that's he's very technical, you know. Yes. Now this brain surgeon, I tell you, he went to, he went to the me uh, uh, mechanic to get his car wasn't working right, and uh, the mechanic was put. This, he says, "No, doc." He says, "You make a lot of money as a surgeon, you know, and you do, I do the same thing. I take a valve out, do the sear. You put a valve in, take it out, but you make a lot more money." He says, "Yes, yeah, but." You don't you don't fix the car while the motor's running, <laughs> so you operate while the person's yes. alive and he stays alive, right? Yes, that's the Isn't goal. Isn't that a touchy that thing? <laughs> how, many, how many people are, are around you when you when you? It's a big team. There are two people doing the surgery. There's uh, uh, your scrub nurse, like the one you know, the who hands you the instruments, and there is the perfusionist, you know, who has to run the heart lung machine, and the anesthesiologist. So there's anywhere from six to eight people in the room working on one person at any given time. And, and how, what, what do you knock them out with? What? <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, a hammer. Hit them. No, <laughs> Just uh, hit them over the head. <laughs> give them a left hook. <laughs> there's been advances since ether. So what is yeah. it? pretty good. I know, and I operate on like this, you know, I'm going. Oh, and then I don't remember everything. Yeah. <laughs> they give you some good cocktails in your veins and, you know. Yeah, they put that there. Okay. And there's some gas. 
All right, now I got 30 seconds. Tell me a little with my people what they should do to stay alive. Tell me anything. Exercise. Exercise. Be active. All right, be active. And if you have a problem, go see your doctor. Think positive. Definitely. Right. We're here. If you have symptoms, if there's anything concerning, come and see us. All right? You don't have to travel far. We're all local. Give us a call. We're happy to take care of you. Right. Einstein Montgomery, Germantown Pike. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks a lot for allowing us to come into your home. And uh, so many songs about the heart. And uh, uh, here's, here's, a, here's a question from the, uh, from the audience. What is it? What should you look for in a cardiologist? What should you look for? I think you should look for somebody who's detail-oriented, who's going to sit down with you and take the time to actually go through every one of your problems and make sure nothing's missed. All right, here's another one from the audience. How does diet affect the heart? Sugar, salt, bad fats, all affect the heart. So very important. All right, the warning signs. I can, are there warning signs I can see before I see a doctor? Um, all right, that was some of our, Yes. go ahead, what was the answer? So, most common warning signs, shortness of breath, chest tightness, or heart palpitations. Feeling when in doubt, check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks a lot for allowing us to come in here. And, uh, and you know, uh, I'm just so happy to have two doctors that, uh, that are on the same team that, that work with me. Okay, I'm still bobbing and weaving here. So, thank you, doctor, <laughs> thank you. so much. Thank, thank you, you so much. And uh, so... Until we meet again, keep bobbing and weaving. Keep your trunks off the canvas. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And for my Hispanic friends, adios, amigos. Good. Good. Adios.